last week, God spoke. And what he said was, are you salt? And he gave you different references for salt. And we being the salt of the earth, I wanted to make sure to clarify that no one is confused about salt today. The salt God is talking about today is a salty, unsavory, a drama field. He's also talking about sugar, over sweet. Everything is pretty, everything is lovely, everything is wonderful. It, the word today is salt, sugar, or truth. Now, having said that, most people go to churches nowadays looking for salt and sugar. Looking for drama. Wait a minute. I'm finna get country. So all you city folks stay with me. Most folk go to church today looking for slop. Those of you who are not familiar with that terminology, back in the day when I was young, poor farmers who had hogs slopped their hogs. They went and they got the leftover food that was not eaten from restaurants, put it all in one barrel. They got multiple hogs, so they had multiple barrels. And a lot of time, the slop was very liquidy. After a period of time of fermentation in that barrel, that slop would begin to have a sweet aroma. I promise you, it didn't stink. It wasn't a very ferocious stink. It was a, it had a certain smell to it. All slop smelled the same almost. And they would take this slop out to their hogs, pour it out to the hogs. Now listen. The effect that this slop had on these hogs was that the hogs got big. My grandfather, Big Daddy, he would take a hog to market and they would be impressed with him. They'd say, Marvin, how'd you get this hog so big? Uh -huh. He'd just laugh and not tell them. He was slopping them, but also giving them corn, maize. He fed them well. Well, to be fattened up, only to be taken to the market and killed. It's much like what we go through today in the church. People go to the church of God in droves to be fed slop. Stuff that's going to fatten you up. See, you're going to look like us believers. You're going to look like us. You might even look better than some of us. You might have a big bank account, a lot of money. You're real fat, but you're of no good to God. Just like when the hog went to the market and he weighed seven, eight, nine hundred pounds, almost a ton. Big Daddy had a hog one time, a sow that was almost a ton. That's 2,000 pounds. It was almost a ton. People are impressed with the weight. But I was reminded because I spoke to somebody that y'all wouldn't believe talk like this. Vernon Paul, he told me, but Wayne, when these hogs would get big filled with slop, you take them and they'd kill them and the meat would not be of the value that they're looking for. You get all that poundage, but the meat is ruined because you fed them slop. You didn't feed them nutrition that's what the truth of God is to us. Nutrition. You can either be fed slop to be killed by the world or nutrition to have a good life in Christ. You choose. Most people want that drama feel slop because it's exciting. It's neat. Who said what today? What deacon is sleeping with what? What did the pastor do? What did the first lady, did you see the first lady up there? She was, uh, she look out. Folk always got some kind of drama. They don't come to the house of God for the truth of God. God is talking to us about his truth. Wanting to be like the world will get you fat and going straight to hell. We of this day and time seem to seek 
controversy, comedy, entertainment, style and charisma, puffed up, educational level, all of this spells drama in the church. And some of it is fashioned to look like it's right. Go to Proverbs 14, 12. Oh my God. God gonna say something to you about what looks right. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. It look right. They got the sound. Boom, got, boom, got, boom. They got the sound. They got the steps. They can do the, I can't do, the, don't nobody look at me and expect me to pick them up and put them down. You, this big old boy, ain't, you probably ain't gonna ever see me shout. Who, who gonna be able to pick me up first of all, second of all? The only time you'll be able to see me pick them up and put them down is if one foot is on a pedal on a drum. I'll pick it up and put it down. I'll play drums, but I ain't finished out. My knees can't handle that. They say, boy, we can't hold you up. They got the look, the sound, the ah, 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 they got all of that. But then when they stand before God and they hear the words, depart from me, thy worker of iniquity, I know you're not. Wait a minute, preacher, what you been feeding a slop? Salt and sugar. Salty is when it's hard. You know, the preacher want to tell you, get out of those pants and put on a dress. God is not. Y'all like that. That's salt. That's when they harsh and they want to make you look the appearance of what they're telling you God is looking for. Or you get the sugary preacher. Well, God is love and he loves you just the way you are. God made you and he knew what he made when he made you. And he loves you. Just give your heart to him. Just repeat these easy words and we believe you'll be saved. God says, y'all stop looking for truth. Y'all appointed these people over you. You sought out this slop that fed you and got you fat. Only for the world to take you to slaughter and kill you. The spirit of truth. Now that come from God. And the spirit of truth doesn't speak mm, of itself. It doesn't speak to entertain you. It doesn't speak to satisfy the world. It doesn't speak the world's agenda. It doesn't speak to gain notoriety for itself. The spirit of truth only speaks what it hears from God, period. It doesn't have its ears tuned to any other station. The spirit of truth is only there to relate. So the spirit of truth, look at it as a conduit that God uses to get his word to you. His instructions, his corrective word, his word of love, his word of cover. That's what the spirit of truth is for. You will never hear the spirit of truth speaking of itself. I'm the truth of God. I can, no. You're not going to hear the spirit of truth inter introducing itself. W what you talking about, Bishop? You know, there's a lot of folk who can't preach unless somebody puff them up real good. Talk about the educational level. Talk about where they've been and what they do. The spirit of truth ain't like that. The spirit of truth is waiting to hear from God what to tell you to help you be pleasing to God. The spirit of truth is another comforter that God sent. Jesus said, I'm going to go away. While I was here, I was your comforter, but I'm going to go away. And I'm going to send you a comforter they call the Holy Ghost. That's the first one. He says he's going to send us a second comforter, the spirit of truth. John 16, 13, how be it when he, who is he, God, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things 
to come. All y'all want to know what the world going to do? All y'all want to know what tomorrow holds? All y'all want to know how your job going to pan out? All y'all want to know whether or not you're going to be healed, whether or not you're going to stop into talk to the spirit of truth. It'll tell you. Because it'll get you in line with the will of God. God says, I know my thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of war. <laughs> Don't forget the last part. With an expected end. God expects us to be victorious when following the spirit of truth, the word of God. You can't be victorious just living life the way you want to and think God going to be behind everything you do. That in itself is foolishness. You wonder why sometimes when you come, <laughs> Sometimes people wonder why, if they hear me preach, they don't understand what I'm saying. They wonder why, well, Bishop, uh, da -da 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 -da. let's go to John, 1 John 4, 5, and 6. 1 John 4, 5, and 6. God explain. listen, there is nothing that you can confront or come up to in the world that God hasn't already explained in the word. That's why we need the spirit of truth. People are no longer seeking the spirit of truth. Here's, here's something God just gave me. They're, speaking the, they're seeking the spirit of compliance. And they're not complying with the word of God. They're complying with what the preachers say. I'm the different preacher that's going to tell you. Uh-uh. I'm not going to give you that kind of instruction because you want to stand before God as if you came up to the mark of my expected. No, the devil's a lie. I'm going to tell you what does say the Lord. Now, if you decide you don't want to get in line with the word of truth, that's your business. If you act like you couldn't understand me, you couldn't hear me. You might be living in the wrong way. You might be living according to the world. First John 4, 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. See, that's what you have happen when you go to these churches filled with slop. Everybody from the world feel comfortable in there because they talk in their language. I hope you caught that. And the world heareth them, verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we two things. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. <laughs> when he said that it got me. I'm like what? He said yeah. When you get to know the spirit of truth. It will teach you how to not be in error. How to walk uprightly before God. How to abide by the word of God. How to live in the parameters that God have set when you go after the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth will guide you out of all unrighteousness if you let it, if you're obedient, if you're seeking to be one with God. A lot of folk don't want that. Why? Because if I become one with God or if I have to walk the walk with God, listen, I got to stop doing what I like. God may not approve of the way I conduct business in my life. And I really don't want to change. I'm the person of my life. I, I'm the boss of me. I don't need God to change me. And, 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 and for those of you who might say, well, the preacher told me, da, 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 this ain't that preacher. I'm not that one. I'm not going to tell you. Now, if you ask me, that's different. If you ask me and God gives it, I'll tell you. But I'm not finna come into your life and tell you you need to do this and you need to do that. If you ain't got no problem with it. Case in point, hear me now. If you ain't got a problem with it, I ain't trying to mess it up for you. Go for it. But, but listen, when we stand before God, you ain't finna blame me for your shortcoming. You, no, no, no. Asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open unto you. You got a part to play in this too. 
You've got to want to seek God's face. You've got to want to line up with God. You've got to want to live the life. You've got to want to take on the new man. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Why do you think you can come to the house of God to serve God and remain the same? I have no clue. You can't even do that with the world. Y'all want me to prove it? Tell me somebody who can start a job that they were already doing at another company. Hear me. And not have to go through orientation to learn how to do it their way. Anybody want to tell me? <laughs> they may hire you for the same position, but you still got to go be trained to do it their way. Why do we think we can come to the house of God and remain the same? When God has provided you, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Your old life is passed away. So stop trying to hold on to it. Get in truth. Truth will make you see where you're in error. The men of God quoted, we know two things. We know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Spirit of wrongdoing. The spirit of I want. The spirit of I've been wanting this all my life. The spirit of uh, uh, you're going to learn today. So we must come out from among those things that are causing us to, I love it the way God puts stuff. We've got to come out from among those things that cause us to walk in error with God, to walk in conflict with God, to walk in contrariness with God, to walk in rebellion with God. We've got to come out from among that. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. A lot of folk like to use this particularly to tell you to come out from among the world. Show me where it say the world. There's a lot of things we miss because when Jesus came on the scene, he dealt with the heart. He dealt with the spirit of the man. So when he says, come out from among them, who is the them, God? Them that are not doing my will. Them might be in your own house. Them might be your friends. Them might be your coworkers. Them might be your own mind. Come out from among them. What you talking about, God? Stop thinking that way. Stop operating that way. Stop walking that way. Stop participating in those things. You can't sit there and let somebody go right beside you now. Shoot and kill somebody and you not say nothing and think you're not guilty. Are you serious? You did nothing to stop it. You did nothing to pre-warn. If you knew it was coming, you didn't tell nobody. You let it happen. You just as guilty. That's why he said come out from among them. Come out from among those that are in conflict with me. Come out from among those who are in rebellion against me. Who want you to believe that what I think should be law for me. What you saying, Bishop? Preachers now are bowing to people. What do you mean by that? Simply this. If I feel like it's okay for me to smoke weed. To drink alcohol, to hoe, to be gay, to be whatever. The preacher going to agree with me because he don't want to lose my membership. You bowing to me, sir. I'm going to need you not to do that. I'm going to need you to take a stand. This preacher will tell you, whatever it is that you've got that's in conflict with the word of God, it's on you, and I need you to get it together. Well, do you agree with me? No, not necessarily, but I do agree with this. That there will be some things in your life that you'll be able to do that I won't. I've said that too many times. Y'all don't catch the loophole. What's the loophole? I didn't say what. I just said there are some things in your life that you'll be able to do that I won't. There are some things in my life that I'll be able to do that you won't. 
Don't try to be me, and I won't try to be you. I'm not trying to make you into the image of what I think God is looking for. It's hard enough for me to conform to that image. Who am I to try and reconstruct your life? I ain't got that kind of time. I just got enough time in this lifetime to take care of John Wayne. To make sure he lines up with the will of God. To make sure he's walking uprightly before God. I ain't got time to pass judgment on you. That ain't my job. Salt and sugar. Not my thing. Truth. So Bishop, what do you feel about this, that, and the other? I'm going to caution you even right now. Don't you ask me that. If you ain't prepared to hear the answer. Because it ain't going to be my answer. It's going to be what the words say about it. What does God say about a certain thing? God took us to certain places about certain things. He destroyed certain people because of certain things. You're not going to now tell me that those certain things are okay with God. Man, I ain't boo-boo the fool. I wasn't born yesterday. Might have been born two days ago, but I wasn't born yesterday. You're not going to get that over on me. Well, Bishop, if you, we're going we gonna to cancel you. When was I ever a part of the club in the first place? Mm -hmm. How are how, how you going to cancel me? I ain't got that kind of following. How are how, how you going to cancel me? What? Oh, so you got an in with God that you can cancel me? Because that's who I get my instructions from is God. We are afraid of the wrong things. And we participate and we chase after these Salt and sugary messages. Counselings. You want somebody who's going to counsel you in a sugary kind of way that's going to halfway agree with you. Y'all catch that? Think about it. Most of the time when we ask somebody a question, we're not asking them sincerely for the truth. We're asking them, do they agree with us? You agree? You don't say that. Well, this is what happened, Bishop. Blah, 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 blah. And I, blah, 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 blah. There's very little eyes in there. It's always telling me what other people have done. Very little eye did this and that and the other. And then when it's all said and done, I'm that one that's going to ask you, what did you do? What did you think? What did you say? How did you operate? Well, this ain't about me. Don't get mad. Don't do that. Let's look at the truth. Let the truth prevail. See, if you get right with God and you walk uprightly before God, now God, hear me clearly, is now forced by the bounds of his own word to be for you. If you walk uprightly before God, you maintain that relationship of reciprocity. What's reciprocity? You constantly are giving to God. God, I give you praise. God, I give you glory. God, I give you honor. God, I pray to you. God, I thank you. God, I lift you high above. God is now. He, he, he's never forced, but we use that word so you understand. He is. Let me use this one. He is contractually obligated. To respond to you. The old saying, you can't beat God's giving is true. You can't give more to God than he can give to you. And in the volume of which he gives <laughs> is immeasurable. Try to measure it. You're already behind. Every day he wakes you up in your right and you're already behind. With the world the way that it is, you're already behind. I'm going to tell y'all one. You know, I have to say what God tell me. You're already behind because you're still living. When most people was dead. Research it and find out what I'm telling you. Most people die with that. With two? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You have two things that are set to destroy you. Most folk are in the grave. You need to think. Now God, uh, what's your focus for my life? People of God all need to be that way. Not just you. Everybody. Because when we miss the direction of God for our lives, that means we're living our life for the enemy. Somebody need to clarify and understand that. When you miss the direction of your life that God has sent, and you're not lined up with the word of God, you're not, lined, you're not concerned 
with the ways of God. You are currently living for the enemy. Period. I don't care who you are. Ain't no ifs and buts about it. That's why you like the sugary and the salty messages that you hear on the internet at different churches you go to visit. Oh, it's so nice in here. Look at this. Get away from me. He said, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. God is not trying to push you away. He's there to receive you. And he told you how he's going to receive you. Come out from among those things that rebel against me. Come out from among those things that are not according to my will for your life. Come out from what you mean. It could be an idea you got to come out from among. It could be a desire you got to come out from among. It could be something that you've wanted all your life. You got to come out from among and be separated from it. No longer do not no longer desire it, but deny it. And God said, I'll receive you. I'll receive you under that. It's a lifestyle that God is looking for. It's not a certain dress or a suit, but your heart's focus and commitment. You don't say it's Jesus all the way. I'm with Jesus all the way. You got to put yourself in the room with him and he in the room with you. And there is no compromise. There is no I'm Jesus today, but tomorrow I need to be John Wayne because I got to deal with some folk. I know that, you know, that's a reality for a lot of folk. It's Jesus today, but tomorrow, oh, you're going to get it. <laughs> I, got, I got a storage bank saved up back here or some words that I got for you. I've been thinking about this all weekend long. Come Monday morning, oh yeah, I'm going to let you have it. I've been thinking about this all weekend. You remember Friday when you said to me, such and such and such? Well, you know what? You Why didn't you let it go Friday? Why you had to sit there and cultivate that all weekend long? Be in the wrong frame of mind. Get in the spirit of truth and the spirit of truth will have you forgive folk like that. The spirit of truth will have you be at peace with all men if that possible. It says it in the word. Be at peace with all men if possible. Whenever the opportunity presents itself, be at peace with them. Don't be at war. God said, now I don't need you lifting your hand. He said, I'll fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. That's instructions. That's what that is. In case y'all missed it. That's instructions for you to be still and be quiet. Shut up. Don't respond. Let God fight. He said, I am God. Vengeance is mine. I shall repay. Really, God? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a living witness of this. Whenever you let God take care of business, can't nobody do it like God. And listen, he do it right fast, quick, and in a hurry. He don't play either. And it doesn't matter how big they are in the world. I've seen the big ones fall. Y'all gonna catch it. Once we get to a place of clean, clean living, clean up your lifestyle, clean up your mind's thought process, clean up your heart's desire. If you provide a clean environment, the spirit of truth will come in and dwell there. Let's go to John 14, 15 through 17. If ye love me, huh, keep my commandment. <laughs> Almost, I have to say it. Cause when he said keep my commandments, he didn't say keep yours. He said, keep your desires, your wants. He said, keep my commandments. And some of y'all don't know what his commandments are. Somebody might be able to quote the Ten Commandments, but guess what? That wasn't all. There's so many instructions in the word of God, the Ten Commandments don't. That ain't even a tenth of what God said. That ain't even one percent. That's point zero, zero, zero. I don't know how many... The Bible is too big for that to be. 
Come on. That was the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. God gave that. Hear me now. Jesus came on the scene later and said, I didn't come to cancel that. I came to fulfill it. What you talking about? Well, you were falling short according to the letter of the law. I came to deal with the part of the law that you never did. What was that, God? Your heart. What you talking about? You looked the part. You dressed the part. You might have even did and conformed to the letter. Almost. But then your heart was far from it. You did it because you wanted the bragging rights to say you did. You never did it because of your love for me. Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law. Keep my commandments, verse 16. And I will pray the Father. How do you get Jesus to pray for you? Did he just say it? If you love me, obey me. Listen, in the next line he said, and I'll pray for you. I hope y'all caught that. I'll pray the Father. Who has the active ear of God constantly? The Son of God. Y'all, boy. Y'all catch that. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. This is beside the Holy Ghost. Besides the Holy Ghost now. Jesus said that was the first one. He talking about the second one. I'll give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. What's that comforter, Jesus? Verse 17, even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot, will not, don't seek to, don't want to receive it. Y'all ain't had this problem, but uh, it, it, it's not really a problem for me because I very quickly wash my hands because I do what God tells me to do. But listen, oftentimes I'm called upon to, to counsel people. Listen, <laughs> I dwell in truth, not your fantasy. I don't, de I, I don't dwell in your, your fantasy of what you think the world ought to be or what it owes you or none of that. I, I dwell in the truth. And there comes a time in the midst of a conversation that God will say, okay, I'm through. Y'all better hear. God, when he says, I'm through. Y'all don't understand what that means. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to go back and forth with you either. Think about it. He's God. What do you look like going back and forth with a human? About what you think. About how you feel. When he's God and he made you. From the smallest molecule you could ever find. He created you. What do you look like you standing there arguing with God? He said I'm through. And I'll very quickly turn. Why? For that very reason, whom the world cannot receive. You can't receive truth if you're too busy living the world's lifestyle. You can't receive correction if you like your life too much. The reason why you don't see too many rich folk looking for the truth of God, looking for the word of God, for the real lifestyle of God, is because their money is their God. It dictates what they can have and what they don't want. See, the truth of God puts you in the parameters where God is your provider, period. Money can get in the way of God. You can have so much of it, you don't think you need God. You go to God for a little penny anything. Or unless you're on your deathbed, then you want God to answer. Uh, let, let's let's keep. May abide with you forever, verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Spirit of truth shall be in you, if that's what you seek after, if that's what you desire. Do, do you desire that type of relationship with God? Where nothing else matters. Nothing. 
Oh, bless God. Nothing else matters now. Not your family, not your friends, not your loved ones, not your husband, your wives, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, co-workers. I don't care what category they fall in. Nothing else matters. Just God. Will you be that one for him? That he may show himself strong in your life. Y'all are not, you, you, you are privy to the miracle that God performed for y'all, but this ain't the only thing. When I tell you God is just doing stuff, people of God, listen. God is just doing stuff. Showing himself to be God. God ain't nothing to play with. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you can believe God, all things are possible to them that believe. If you can believe God. Oftentimes when Jesus healed somebody, he said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. What'd that mean? According to what you can believe, that's what I'll do. Really? Yeah. For real. According to what you can believe. If you believe that this paper is white, according to your faith be it done unto you. What color is this paper? White. Now I don't have I'm not that preacher that's going to turn around and do a magic trick. If you can believe the paper is blue, what color is it? And then it turned blue. I don't do that foolishness. That don't belong in the house of God. Just the reality of the spirit of God. What you can believe, that's what God will do. He'll respond to your connection to him. What your heart connects to him. The truth sanctifies you. Mm. It cleans you. It legitimizes you. It consecrates you. John 17, 17. This is Jesus talking. And he told the Father in verse 14. It ain't going to be up there. I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Then he tells God, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Y'all need to go back and read that from 14 on down. 14 through 17. Read it. Study it. Look at it, how Jesus is talking concerning us. Because then you'll understand how the world treats you now. Some folks don't understand why the world is so mean to us. Why the world is so dismissive. Why the world is so ugly to real people of God. When I say real people of God, folk who will take a stand. I'm not talking about them showboating folk. I'm not talking about them salt and sugar preachers. I'm not. Because see, they can either be to the extreme of salt where it's just, you're too salty. You be to the extreme of sugar, you're too sweet. They don't ever come in and seek God for his truth. I'm talking about the truth speakers. They ugly to us. They want to talk all manner of evil against you. Say all kind of things about you. Listen, they'll be the one that degrades you and tell you your ministry ain't growing because you ain't got nothing. Look in this preacher's eyes and tell him, do he look like he care what you're saying? Look deep now. See if you can find anything. My instructions come from God. I don't care nothing about what they say. To God be the glory. He shows me miracle signs and wonders. Not them. I look in all of their ministries and look through. Don't see nothing. Then God comes and says, now watch this. Watch this. Say this and watch this. Watch this. Listen. When y'all don't know, God will wake me up. Wake up, boy. Yes, sir. Pray for this. Yes, sir. Now watch this. That's what you don't know. I'm not here to promote me. I'm here to promote God. God is doing a lot in this time. And the spirit of truth will allow you to see what God is doing and line up with God's doings. 
And it'll also allow you to identify the spirit of error so you don't walk in him. See, if you can see error coming, you can avoid him. But if you don't know it's error, you and error are going to be holding hands walking down the street and you don't even know it. That was specifically for the single girl. You and the spirit of error are going to be walking down the street holding hands. You don't even know it. And that's the spirit of error you holding hands with. Hear me clearly. Seek God and God's choice for his daughter. Don't, don't you, do, please don't you choose because your choosing ain't right. Son, that includes you too. The spirit of truth sanctifies us through the word of truth, not entertainment and not drama. So stop seeking those two things. Seek the spirit of truth. Know what God desires for you and get in line with it. Come on, let's pray. Lord, we, your people, submit to your ways for your glory, God. Help us get in line with the spirit of truth. Help us to be able to hear the spirit of truth, to know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error so that we would not go down walking the street with the hands of the spirit of error. God, we thank you for your love, your kindness, your protection, your grace, and your mercy. Now, God, have your way. Seal your word in our hearts with truth and allow us to conform and be obedient. In Jesus' name, all those who agree, say amen.